meeting for the Bridge and Port Authority for January 25th. And uh, the business at the meeting is to review uh, financial statements as of the end of December. Uh, Dave, before we ask Patty to highlight this, do you have any uh, uh, questions or input uh, on statements? Nope, I'll let her go over them and then go from there. Patty, we uh, turn the turn the program over to you. Thank you so much. Um, to address your initial question, Chris, that you sent me email, we have received our forgiveness for the first PPP, so we owe nothing on that. We're golden, and we have already submitted for the 2021 PPP. Uh, we're asking for $365,000 in change. When we submitted the first one, we didn't realize we were going to get the CARES Act. And now that the airport is being covered under the CARES Act, that lessens what um, our need is for the rest of the organization. Plus, we are not allowed, even though Michael is a U.S. citizen who lives on the other side of the border, you cannot use PPP money to pay a resident of Canada. So between the airport that is, goes under the CARES Act plus someone like Michael who lives on the other side of the border, that's the main reason for the reduction from the 2020 PPP to this one. Mm -hmm. We also know that we are getting more money in the CARES Act, approximately a million dollars more. We don't have anything official on that yet. Um, I've been in touch with McFarland Johnson and they say that they know it's coming, but we don't have any document that says what we're getting. So we will have about another eight months of CARES Act that we can tap on to the airport. Sounds good. Okay. Um, the uh, just a couple of highlighted uh, overview things. The wind turbine line of credit that uh, Community Bank uh, that we have with Community Bank, they are not working too quickly although they are going to turn that line of credit into a loan. I expect we'll see the loan document sometime in February um, because we haven't paid anything on it. We've just been paying the interest. They're going to close the line and turn it into a term loan. Mm -hmm. uh, NASA is currently on hiatus. So the airport personnel are picking up the cleaning and the plowing at the airport. We are saving about $10,000 a month having NAPCO on hiatus. There are a couple of insurance items that they still have to pay whether they're here or not. So we do pay them a little bit, but it's much less than what we were paying. And the border station, paperwork has been sent to Gladys, who is going to nudge the Attorney General. I'll bet that's the best. That's the best. That. You know, that's the best approach you can take, I would think. Yes. And out of the $1 million entitlement grant for the employment, we have received the first payment from the FAA of $331,000 that we are using to pay Monroe Tractor, who has dropped off two pieces of equipment. So we're not out any money yet on the uh, entitlement grant, which is good. Any questions on any of that sort of high level? Okay, I'll go on to the statement of financial position. The main thing to look at here is our accounts receivable under our current assets. 
82% of that 112 is current, 11.8% is once of 30 days. So 94% of the accounts receivable is either current or 130 days. So we have very little that is due to us that is out there in the um, in the higher days. What are we Under hearing? The current uh, it's just the volume changing on the screen here. Very good. On the accounts payable, the accounts payable are at $758,000 at the end of December. They are currently at $1 million right now, but we have to remember of that $1 million, $290,000 is the brand new um, New York State Retirement Bill. So as of the 25th of January, we are still at $789,000. Mm -hmm. We have had some good luck with the salt this winter. More salt, I think, than we had expected. We've got the Saw Rock contract that is adding a little bit more to our income than we had anticipated or budgeted. So we've been able to do a little bit every so often on the, um, on the payables that we hadn't anticipated. Um, if there are no questions, we'll go on to the actual to budget for the bridge. Nothing really new um, on the on the revenue. We did go very conservative with our rentals or our, our, our tolls, and we are still ahead of the game on that. Mm -hmm. Duty free is what is bringing our rental income down. And we have had no advertising income, which is the negative $10,000. Expenses, the, the under budget from not using quite as much summer health and the seasonal bridge crew was let go early, starting to be whittled away now that we have um, snow blow, snow plowing, et cetera. So we're still in a good position there but it is starting to dwindle a bit. Um, the interest expense, that $38,000 under budget, is the money that was put on the bridge that actually belongs to the wind turbine. The wind turbine line of credit is actually coming out of the wind turbine, so we will continue to stay under budget. Uh, everything else, we're fighting hard to keep everything under budget. Our year-to-date change in net assets before depreciation is a negative $244,000. Then the um, statement of activities for the port fund, just two little notes here. Under expenses, if you go down to the port, wind turbine project, we have $7,600. Of that $7,600, $2,100 is the interest on that line of credit. The rest of it is the health and welfare to longshoremen. Now that the wind turbine project is over for the, for the winter, that health and welfare should be charged straight to the marine terminal. So I have to do a journal entry to move that $5,000 under um, just the marine terminal, not the port, or not the wind turbine project. Um, the CARES Act for December income is at $84,000. It would be higher, except that the OBPA was given the incorrect month that it could start requesting reimbursement for the loan money. And when the FAA found that out, they asked us to give it back to them. So some of the money that we would have used for our own request, we had to use to pay back 
CSAA. Uh, if we go on to the actual versus budget, our rental income is still above budget, uh, mainly because of the buyout that Veritas did with their lease. It is offsetting some of the facility fee income that was paid by Allegiance, who's no longer here, so that, that is starting to um, be depleted also. Our fuel sales and fare charges we know are, are down. Our port operating and rental fees, we're seeing an uptick, even though it's still 700,000 below under budget. It was 720 uh, in November. So the salt is making um, a good impact on the on that uh, income line. Um, the wind turbine project, of course, is done. So that uh, 655 will remain under budget for the rest of the year. Our other income, uh, much of that other income was the uh, insurance proceeds, and that is offsetting our lack of um, parking income. If we get down to the expense side, we're seeing a bit more over budget on the salaries and wages due to the overtime for snow plowing, et cetera. Everything else is pretty much the same as it was last month with small um, changes here and there. Our change in net assets is still a healthy 1.3, but we have to remember that 1.2 of that belongs to the CARES Act reimbursement. So we're really right now in a position that the um, court fund is even. Uh, nothing gained, nothing lost. Uh, that probably will not last too much longer. Any questions? This all makes sense to me as presented. David? Uh, same here. I'm just happy to see that we're, we're still working hard on the expense side, and that's good. Yeah, I, I salute the uh, control of the expenses. Is there anything else to report, Patty? I don't think so. Is there everything we talked about? I think we have I think we've touched on everything. Well this covers the things that were clearly on the agenda for our meeting this afternoon. Sam, did you have any uh, comments or questions? No, I heard the uh, presentation and Look that Patty sent us. I think uh, her and Steve have uh, done a good job with everything. And I'm pretty satisfied that we're on the right track. Yeah. Steve, did you have anything to add? Um, uh, I would say, and Patty and I have talked, and I think I've even mentioned this to the chairman, um, for what it's worth, I think we're in better we're in better shape than I thought we would be say a month and a half ago or two. When we were doing budget, um, I thought really this would be the critical point of uh, you know uh, trying to get through and I don't know whether we delayed it or whether uh, it'll continue like this through the winter and early spring but with uh, the PPE um, application in there and if that comes through that might see us through um, in, in decent shape towards springtime. I, I can't speak for the uh, bridge reopening but just to, that's kind of my observation was that I feel better right now of uh, where we're at um, compared to where I thought we'd be at. So for what that's worth. Yeah. Well, I think that my interest is that if you keep looking 30, 60 days, even 90 days ahead, and I know that's difficult to do given that uh, 
so much as volatile about uh, governmental actions that might be taken, which would change things. But if you can see that you're going to be hitting a real crunch, uh, we'd like to know about it so that uh, we could at least participate in, in the uh, discussion. Uh, we did have the opportunity, actually Tompkins reached out to us and asked us if we would like to take the money off of our line of credit with Tompkins. So we have a buffer right now of what, $100,000, $110,000. And you aren't going to touch unless you have to. I mean, that we just know is there in case we do get to that wall. And we have a payroll or something that we have to pay. We have that money. We're being stingy. We paid most of the airport bills that are being reimbursed on, under the CARES Act. We're trying to hold back some of that money because if, if I, I, I don't want to sound up and down, but if we've already paid the airport bills and now we've got the money back, we're stashing that away also mm -hmm. so that there's just anywhere we can have a little bit of a buffer to help us through if come March we have a hard March. And uh, one thing I'd like to add, um, Chris, is that um, we're in 10 to 11 months of um, really a really strict um, budget with, and our, and our people have been doing a great job. They're already in that mode of um, only taking or only getting what they need. And so that behavior is kind of ingrained in us right now. So other than an emergency, um, everybody's been doing a really great job of, um, you know, kind of living within our means. Um, that doesn't mean that we're taking care of everything, but um, we're, we're just trying to prioritize things until we get through this. But I think I want to say this for our employees have all understood that we, you know, we only get what we really need. And, and the only thing really that would concern us is some emergency or repair or something that came up unexpectedly. So I think um, that, that, that shows right now that we've got a pretty good handle on our expenses from month to month. I think that's super. I think that's super. I'm reminded that deferred maintenance, though, is not avoided, and that at some point, uh, you know, when we, uh, I, I assume we are going to get back to a more typical situation, and when that comes, it's probably going to require uh, perhaps higher maintenance budgets than we've had in the past. And budgets. It, it will. It will. It can't go on forever. Stephanie, is there anything that you want to add? Uh, no, sir. I think that everyone is doing a great job. The, the entire staff has been working very hard to keep costs down. And um, from what I hear every meeting with Patty, I don't know how she is managing to keep the keep this budget the way it is. Uh, it gets better every month, and under these circumstances, I cannot believe what a great job she's doing with it. Um, and I know Steve has a lot to do with it too. So I'm not just Patty, but Steve too. Um, at the airport, we're trying our best to keep uh, expenses as low as possible. Uh, we'll continue to to look at things. I just hope that uh, people start wanting to fly again. Well, they do want to fly. I hope they start feeling safe to fly again. Sure. And I'm anxious to see what the uh, EAS uh, will turn out to be. Uh, we still have not gotten word. And I'm, I expect any day to hear something. But I do, I do think people, once things open up, we're going to see a big increase in flying. And that'll be great for us. Well, is that regard? I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, to that regard, one of the things I've been wondering again about is 
the airport, right, and getting it moving again. And uh, vaccines are happening. And I'm just wondering, because I don't know, obviously, well, I guess I'm not old enough for the vaccine at this point, but um, some of those folks that are getting vaccines, would they be thinking about booking, uh, you know, your second shot happens here in February, would they be thinking about traveling in March or in April? Should we be starting to target some ads or something to let people know what we're doing there at the airport with the gates up and whatnot, trying to get them to park and go at our place rather than somewhere else? And the vaccine thing, you know, as slow as it may seem, will uh, will only ramp up. So just, uh, you know, as people feel comfortable, part of that, if they get a vaccine, I think they're going to feel comfortable pretty fast about moving around. So just curious if we can do anything. I'm, I, I'm very, uh, you know, uh, applause to everybody for keeping uh, costs down, but I'm trying to figure in my mind, wondering what we can do for revenue streams to get up. And yes, certainly yes. that's one of them is passengers. So, Yes, um, we can. I'm still working with SkyWest, and I get an impression that they're sort of holding off until the DOT makes their announcement, because if they do get the uh, endorsement from the uh, DOT, they have a big plan for announcing that they are going to be here longer. So. Right now, a little bit up in the air with them. Uh, I'm working with the uh, the web developer to get more onto the website and get a new website up and running. It, he ran into some uh, additional technical problems that I have no clue what he's doing, what what they are, but stems from the last website. But with any luck, we'll get that website up and moving again. And any thoughts on advertising that you can with them welcome welcome to hear them and do my best with them that sounds good that sounds good do we have any other uh, uh, we good here I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Is there a I'm comment? Sorry, I didn't understand. Is there a comment? No, we're good here, Chris. Okay, very good. Yes, now I understand. Okay, yes, now I understand. <laughs> In that case, uh, could I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> meeting adjourned. Thank, Thank you. you. Chris. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.